As a man, it's quite difficult to say how you feel. Well, James, what does a positive song do with the state of your mind? Well, I think I just didn't really want to do a third album of melancholic, sad songs because I'd done that before. And to repeat yourself doesn't really give you any sense of fulfillment. And so instead, I've done something upbeat and energetic. Um, and for me, it's given me a fresh lease of life and I'm really enjoying the music that I do. Yeah, and does a positive song, does that give you a more positive, positive feeling for yourself, do you think? You know, I think I write it when I'm in a positive mood um, and I record it as positive as I can. Um, what happens afterwards is how you listen to it and how much you enjoy it. Mm. And with all the other albums, you, f you felt sad or is that a little bit too much? Sad? The other albums I've really written with uh, you know, an acoustic guitar and I've done it on my own in a quiet place and so naturally they've just been a bit more melancholic. Mm. Whereas instead, this one, I went back to where I started, which was on the electric guitar. Um, and, I, um, and I pulled in other musicians as well along the way in the recording. So instead of just being one man, you know, the singer-songwriter, the troubadour, instead it was fronting a band and working with groove and rhythm um, uh, with uh, more instruments and more musicians. And that's why it's more rounded. And that's why it was much more fun to probably do as well. What do you learn from that with working more uh, yeah, with with other musicians in, in that starting phase right away? Well, each musician who you bring in um, has a different feel. And it doesn't necessarily mean one is better or worse than the other, but it just means that that certain lightness of touch or grit or attitude um, can bring a different kind of feel. And, uh, and it's so hard to define and uh, you, only, you, know, you can only understand it when you play it and, uh, and hear it back. Um, and, and it's been a really great phase of experimentation and that's why this album has taken over a year to make. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing some research I stumbled across some old uh, reviews, concert reviews and uh, people wrote things like uh, this show was uh, especially happy for someone like James, uh, James Blunt, something like that. And how do you think that that whole aura of you being the sad and serious guy, how, how, how did, did that form do you think? Yeah you know um, my live shows have always been really um, full of energy and people have always been surprised by their shows and that's perhaps just because I'm famous for a handful of slower singles um, and that's the way my record company have marketed me and the, and the radio stations have then um, helped with that and it's been a great success in, a, in getting an album out but it doesn't necessarily paint the full picture of what the music's all about and that's why the people are surprised by the live show. And I guess maybe this third album will perhaps you know, fill in all the gaps because it is the album that is much more upbeat. Yeah. Was it difficult to break through that, 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 that picture that people paint of you? I think um, you will always, people will always have a certain perception of, uh, of musicians and artists depending on what they're told or on what they're told to think um, or what they hear as singles much more. And, um, and so I think you, don't, you can't necessarily change those or, or it's very difficult to control that. And why would you? Instead, as a musician, it's more important just to have fun and do what you love. And that's why these songs are the songs I've always wanted to write. And this album is the kind of music I want to listen to. And who knows what will happen here. Is it always that much fun for you? Yeah, pretty much. It's the most amazing job, really. Um, I love being in the studio. I love calling musicians in and saying, come on, let's make a noise and have fun with it. And then we uh, go out on tour and we play around the world to different people. And I'm really lucky that I can come to a place like Amsterdam and, uh, and people turn up and, uh, and so they connect with the music and sing the songs with me. And, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty lucky, a lucky job. Yeah. Uh, back in university, you wrote a thesis about uh, the production of a pop idol. How do you think that writing that, what can, the knowledge that you learned from that, how did that become useful in your career? I think um, I, my dissertation was um, useful in, in uh, teaching me the way I didn't want to go, which I didn't want to talk about brands and image and, um, and how to construct um, someone in the music industry, you know, to do with clothes and, uh, and styling. But instead, I've just focused on really writing and performing really very honest, true songs. And, and I hope then that it's the words that people hear in them that they relate to their own experiences. Yeah, but I can imagine that a record label sometimes say things to you that you should do this or you should do this, or isn't that the case with you? Yeah, I have a cool relationship with my record company where um, they um, let me make the album that I want to make. And, uh, and when I finish recording it, I give it to them and I say, go on, you go and put it out um, and see if anyone likes it. And I, and I like that.